Next, because that sets us up in terms of the backdrop, Damien's words there on the Brexit talks, uh, for what's happening tomorrow at Westminster, because the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Philip Hammond, is to deliver the autumn statement tomorrow. It is his first major statement uh, on the economy since the vote to leave the EU back in June, and Mr Hammond has adopted a very cautious tone, as we know, on the economic outlook, a warning of slowing business investment, higher inflation, uh, and in his words, eye-watering levels of debt. So that is the backdrop. Of course, there's a lot of speculation about what he may or may not do tomorrow. So to, to discuss what might be possible and indeed what they'd like to see, we're going to talk now to uh, two commentators. In Oxford, we have uh, the political economist and chair of the big innovation centre, Will Hutton, uh, uh, who backed a Remain vote in the EU referendum. And from Westminster, we're joined by John Longworth, who's a prominent Leave campaigner and standing down right now as the director general of the uh, British Chambers of Commerce, and he's now co-chair of the Brexit uh, pressure group uh, Leave Means Leave. So, John and Will, thank you both for joining us. It's good to have you with us. Um, John, can I start with you and say, what would you like Philip Hammond to be saying tomorrow about the kind of stability of the economy as we approach what we all accept is uh, and acknowledge is a, a pretty uncertain time? Well, one of the fringe benefits of Brexit is that the Treasury, rather than concentrating purely on the city, ha now has an opportunity and an imperative to look at the wider economy. And certainly the Chancellor needs to be laying down the foundations to make Britain the best economy in the world. So looking at business taxation, looking at infrastructure development, uh, looking at fibre and wireless connectivity, investment in R&D and access to capital. Those are all the things that the previous Chancellor failed to deliver and now need to be delivered. But also, crucially important, the Chancellor needs to start talking Britain up. Because if he looks forward to the end of the two-year period when we do Brexit, we have a huge potential increase and boom to the UK economy as we leave the customs union and the single market, the so-called single market, which is actually a protectionist area, and embrace instead free trade with the globe, embrace deregulation and re repatriate the contribution to the European Union budget. Those things will actually cause a boom in the UK economy. And the economy is right now strong, as we heard earlier in the news bulletin. So the Chancellor ought to be saying positive things rather than relentlessly being a gloom merchant. Uh, well, do you, do you think that the Chancellor is being a gloom merchant? And would you agree with some of the foundations that John was talking about there? Well, I think the idea there's going to be a boom in two or three years' time is really fanciful. Um, just to say that, um, I think the amount of money net net we're going to get out of all of this is going to be negligible. Um, I do agree, obviously. I mean, I think that the, the leaks we've had before this autumn statement about the uh, investment infrastructure and the uh, commitment to uh, the science budget and the commitment on kind of uh, digital Britain were all good news. But of course, the amounts of money are trivial. I mean, they, they sound big, but they're going to be spent over five years and uh, they're, they're moving in the right direction. But I mean, the, on the big story, uh, look, Philip Hammond can't tell lies. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that in 2017 and 2018 and 2019, growth in Britain is going to be much lower than it would otherwise have been. Tax revenues will be much lower than they would otherwise have been. And the debt numbers are plainly going to be very, very big as a result of that, both the annual deficit and the cumulative debt that the country has. And one of the things we're going to see tomorrow, I think, are some very, very big, maybe eye-wateringly big, um, increases in public debt levels as a consequence of leaving the European Union. And I don't think they're going to be compensated by this boom in which we're going to do these trade deals with America first Donald Trump, America first China, India first India. These are not countries that are kind of gagging to have, you know, favorable trade deals with Britain as we leave the one kind of free trade area that there is in the globe. And I think that John and his colleagues are vastly overestimating the benefits of leaving, particularly in a darkening world trade environment, and underestimating um, the benefits of staying with the European Union, or at least having some kind of association with it. Uh, on trade, John, if I may, because we've of course been talking about Donald Trump today and uh, what he's had to say about the, the Pacific <clears throat> deal, do you accept that because he's been very clear about his America First approach, our prospects of getting some kind of beneficial agreement with America under Trump are may be less promising that, that, than you would have expected. Look, the fundamental mistake that Will and a lot of the commentators make is the belief that somehow the European Union single market is a free trade area. 
On the contrary, it's a protectionist area that prevents trade. The fact of the matter is that trade in the world takes place irrespective of trade areas. All the goods that the United States and China sell into the European Union, they sell into the European Union without any trade arrangements whatsoever. So that will continue whatever happens. But we, if we leave the customs union, will have the freedom to actually start to trade with the 190 odd countries around the world, rather than merely the 27 within the European Union. And furthermore, if we actually remove tariffs, while protecting strategic industries, of course, which will be, then be allowed to do because the state aid rules of the EU will not apply. If we remove tariffs, that will be a boon to the UK economy in excess of £60 billion, a massive boost to the UK. OK, and on that's that what point, John, on that, let me bring Will back in because he was uh, trying to get in there on your, your, your initial remarks. Will? I just think that for you know, a, a man like John, who has held a prominent position in kind of business advocacy in Britain, to say some of those things, which he knows are at best half true and are at best actually just not true at all, is fantastic. I mean, it's fantastic. I mean, of course other countries trade with the European Union, but they face kind of small tariffs to do so. Um, we know that we will face tariffs if we have the World Trade Organization kind of option. And lots and lots of kind of companies, hundreds of them, thousands of them, have invested in Britain because they have free tariff-free access uh, in manufactured goods and many services too to the European Union and they will not carry on their rate of investment in, into Britain as a result of our not having a transitional arrangement heading for the for this Brexit world then this notion that Donald Trump who has said that day one he's going to um, scrap the Pacific trade deal is somehow going to be a kind of cuddly teddy bear who's going to do a wonderful trade deal with Britain compensating us for the loss of the European Union is so fanciful, it's so fanciful, it's bonkers. Okay, and on it's, that, only, on it's, that, only on it's only ideology that actually prevents John from seeing it and well, saying it and let, acknowledging let it. Answer, John, it's, the, it's, the, it's the Ramonas and the Wreckers who are now trying to oh, destroy don't call the economy. Me a Mona, I'm a who, realist. who actually, of course, got it all what wrong in the Donald first Trump place. Said on all his the first predictions day in that they came out with before the referendum have not come to pass. Of course, so how because will we haven't say left, I'm we have not left the trade. Who knows? We have not. We have not left the, tra the European that is, Union. That of is course, not the they haven't come to pass. I'm asking you. Calm to, down, to, with Will. A, well, I guess we agitated. How can you possibly say that Donald Trump is going to be, you know, a friendly guy to do an we have trade an deal with? We have an opportunity to trade the world, as we have done in the past, and as we do at but the we moment. Don't but and we our never destiny, lost it. We our never destiny, lost it. Our destiny is in the hands of the businesses in the UK, who are some of the best businesses in the world. And if we make the UK economy the best place in the world to do business with good business taxes with a uh, sort of infrastructure and support is, mechanisms necessary, we then have we the will need business taxes. to do these things. Because you know, actually country, people will what come to the What world are you UK. living in? Stop. Just, what world are you living in? We have the lowest business taxes. No, we Donald don't. Trump, we do. We have the corporation we tax. Can, we we can corporation, cut corporation tax, tax corporation below wages tax, at the moment. Corporation tax, we're targeting 70% will be the, Singapore the lowest. Singapore and Hong Kong have the lowest business the, taxes. Well, you, Hong Kong and Singapore, is that what you want us to be? Well, I'll tell you what, states, fantastic, come on, come on. fantastic economies, and if you combine it with our traditions and they, values, then amazing. We're a country of 65 million future. people. Look, we're, kind of, we're not a tiny island state in, the, in Asia. We are where we are. Well, we're, I'd we're rather talk the economy up and actually have a self-fulfilling prophecy the economy than up. continuing I'm, to wreck. I don't want to go over a cliff with you. I don't want to go over a cliff. I don't want to see substantial increases in unemployment. I don't want to see well, none uh, of the that property will happen. market Just crash. Just as you predicted, all these things would happen after the Brexit they are, vote. We're they going haven't to go, happened, have they? We are We've going got to a very tough, strong economy. We, we are going to have such tough times in 17, 18 and 19, and that's going to be reflected in the autumn statement tomorrow. Well, and it's not being a wrecker. Stop talking down the economy. Be, Accept not, the fact that we're leaving and get behind it. Well, I'm, looking, well, I'm, looking, I'm looking at... I don't have to get behind something that is going to cause me and my fellow country, men and women, enormous damage. Calm I down, don't believe Will. in self... Why should I calm down? Why should I calm down? I confront, I confront people like you in a situation which is just cl cl 
close to calamitous if we don't organise ourselves much, much better than well, just that shows blindly how saying it's all fine. You are, Will, doesn't it? Gentlemen. No, it does not. It Gentlemen. means I'm looking at reality. Will and Will and John. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry about this. I'd like to thank you so much. I've, thank you. I've allowed you to have a go at each other, which, uh, of course, is, uh, is open debate. And um, we'll see what happens in the uh, autumn statement tomorrow. But uh, thank you both very much for coming along and, uh, and debating the prospects with us. Will <laughs> thank Hattner you very and much. John Longworth.